Welcome back to Exquisitely Aligned. I'm Gina Meyer Vincent, the host and your personal soul shifter, here to help you define and design the destiny you desire and deserve. The one where you essentially become exactly what's missing in the world. Today, I'm excited to have back with me beautiful Cindy Williams, wearing many hats of wife, mom, educator, and co-multi-business owner for over three decades. She has many a story to tell, which you will hear today. Cindy and her husband, Todd, are empty nesters who, live, who love to live life like there's no finish line. They enjoy the great outdoors, especially hiking the Rocky Mountains and biking every chance they get. With two 20-something kids and the house to themselves, midlife is anything but a crisis. It's an awakening that they are eager to share with others. So welcome back, Cindy. I'm so glad to have you again. We had such a great time last time that I'm excited to continue some of the things we didn't get to speak about last time. Thank you for being with me. Well, thank you so much, Gina. And I just want to acknowledge um, just how much I have learned from you just being on the podcast last time. And it, it's just been a real honor to talk with you. And thank you for having me back on again. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So I know I had written a few notes because um, we had a conversation after we hit the um, stop recording button. And there were so many other things that I thought, oh, that would be fun to speak about and uh, record. And so here we are again. And I think that um, I know my life has had many twists and turns of which I have some bumps, bruises, new body parts, et cetera, new joints, I should say. Yeah. And um, I think that you share the same sentiment. And so I wondered if you want to share a little bit about some of the things you've been through, how you've had twists and turns and and what for me, I always say um, we can allow them to enlighten us and take us in a different way uh, on our journey for the rest of our lives and inspire those around us to do the same. And I think you've you've had that experience. Yes, yes, I, I have just recently uh, not even. I'm going to say six months ago, uh, mm -hmm. my husband was in, we just kind of had a, a great year last year. There's lots of bumps and bruises and all, all kinds of things. My husband was in a mountain bike accident. I had told you and broke his, his hip, his pelvis, his ribs, you know, and it was on a walker and that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. After that, my mother-in-law, like two weeks later, didn't want to be undone. So she broke her hip. So they had little... <laughs> Twin walkers together, you know, and it's just like when the one domino starts to fall, then the next one comes in the yeah. next one. And I started not feeling very well myself. Come to find out I had mono at a really high level. Mm. All this was going on, didn't go away, didn't go away. And by September, I was starting to lose my hair. Mm. And I had, I, I was feeling good, but I, just was having some different symptoms that I wasn't familiar with, with my body. And I started going to the doctor, doing blood work and all of this. And yeah. it turned out that the Hashimoto's thyroid that I had way back, you know, early 2000s had come back, but this time it was attacking my scalp. Mm. And I don't know about you, but as, as ladies, we, we kind of treasure this. Yes. <laughs> and I, I well, it keeps us warm too. I it mean, does, I have to say, it with short hair, it does, you know. <laughs> it does, but we spend so much time on on this outward appearance mm -hmm. and what we are on on the outside. But I feel like I was about to learn a really big lesson. Mm -hmm. And around November, the hair had gotten to such a point that I had to make a decision on what I was going to do. And it was a tough decision. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, if anybody who's listening who has lost a special part of them, you know, that they right. felt made up part of their body and they've yeah. lost that. That's kind of where I was. And we were driving to Texas to see my daughter for Thanksgiving. And I called her up and I said, Megan, you're going to have to take your mom wig shopping. You're, mm. you, I can't, I have to move on, you know, I, yeah. 
And so we did, and you know, we we went to Bravida's Wigs in Dallas, and and we made a we made a day of it. You know, my daughter yeah. makes everything fun, and we tried on all the different ones, and we had boardroom Sue, and we had uh, Trashy Trish, the long blonde, which is <laughs> my husband wanted. <laughs> So, you know, we, we had fun with it. And I, I determined that, yeah, this was going on, but I still wanted to feel beautiful. Yes. And, you know, and there was n nothing wrong with that. Well, <laughs> fast forward, as, as kind of getting used to all of this on my head, getting used to losing my hair. It's just a just a very strange experience. Yeah. You, you know, what do you do when you're at home? How, how are you beautiful to your husband? How, right. you know, all these emotions are kicking around in about two mm -hmm. weeks. That's my wigdom. <laughs> to a, a charity function. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that this was going to be the moment of my big reveal. I, I don't know if I'm going to come. <laughs> do it. <laughs> my husband, you know, if you're still feeling very uncomfortable, my husband takes me out onto the dance floor and was totally forgetting about what I had on my head. And we started dancing and he took my hand and, you know, he went to do the country swing and troll me around. And mm -hmm. as he started to troll me around. My arm caught my, my hair. Yeah. <laughs> and in that moment, it landed right smack in front of us on, on the dance floor. Mm. And I was already struggling with feeling like I wasn't being real with mm -hmm. the way that I was teaching. Like somehow inside of me, I was a fraud because mm -hmm. I had all this going on and I hadn't spoken of it. And it was like, I just got fast forward to this moment of being totally exposed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. who was I going to be at that moment? Yeah. I okay with Cindy Williams, who I was, right. or was I just the outward appearance? And it was a real coming home moment for me. I cried buckets, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, you know, yeah, we got to share it. I go, I have to share this because I, I just, I want to be real with women. And I know we all have stories of shame and embarrassment and humiliation, that we're better or make those stories in the shame smaller if we're able to share it and help others. Right. right. And I think, you know, I would have been crying there for you, <laughs> like alongside my husband would have been like, what are you crying about? Hold on. I don't know. Her. <laughs> I just thought, you know, um, I think we all would feel into that the same as you and probably your husband for you. And, um, yeah, I think when you say it's a real coming home, um, you know, I think there are times in our lives like that. My my mm -hmm. experience is a little different. I don't even remember if I mentioned this to you, but uh, over the years I've had alopecia areata, which is a oh, long yeah. mouthful. Yes, but I would lose like a quarter size patch of hair, and I've had. Mm -hmm. and this started as I was applying to colleges. It happened again when I called off a wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, that I'm thankful now, hindsight, right? <laughs> right? That I pulled off that wedding, the wedding to the wrong man, um, so that I was available for the right yeah. man who yeah. now we are, you know, this October mm -hmm. we'll be married 25 years. But, um, and most days he's the right man. There are moments where, <laughs> <laughs> okay. anyway, I think that that's a podcast. That's another episode. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's being real about marriage, right? But the, mm -hmm. the real coming home is there are moments where, you know, I I don't know you very well. This is our second time together on the yeah. show. Um, but what I do, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. I understand when you say you don't, you want to be transparent. You don't want to be considered a fraud, especially working. We both work with women mm -hmm. um, and a few smart men. And, um, you know, I think it is, I remember with my hair being short and the wind would blow. Yeah. I was in marching band and the wind would blow and I'd be afraid of the person bes behind me on that formation, on the next formation, on the next formation, because I didn't know if my half inch, well, maybe an inch long piece of hair was going to cover it, you know? Right. Right. And not everybody understands what that is. It, yeah. It's not, what I had was not contagious, just like you. 
But, you know, it becomes, I think people are like, what is that? You know, and is it contagious? Is my right. hair going to fall out if I have lunch with her? No, I'm teasing. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, you what you start. But I remember very much I was in high school and then again uh, with a job in my 20s and late 20s with um, this uh, calling off a wedding that I lost patches of hair size of a quarter and there was no guarantee that the hair would grow back same color, right. same texture. Right. It was, I mean, right. lucky for me, it did. I mm -hmm. was very lucky, but I know some people it grows back gray, blonde, you know, totally right. different. And um, it, it was very nerve wracking for me. So I can only imagine what it felt like for you being more of the entire head being affected. And right. um you know, so how did you, uh, I mean, how did you navigate this? Something so unexpected on a beautiful night, celebrating a charity, dressed up, dancing, like all the things that I enjoy, right? You're out with your husband, you're dressed up, there's good music, there's fun yeah. people, it's for a cause. I mean, the list goes on, you're socializing, but how did you navigate that? And then the days after or weeks after? Well, I, I, when I tell this story, when I speak to women's groups, I always say, I, because you always hear the gasp, like, yeah. oh, no, you know, and I would, I would love to say in hindsight that I was a strong enough woman and I believed in myself enough and knew who I was enough to be yeah. able to reach down there with my husband, plop it back on my head, <laughs> dancing <laughs> right back in the same beat, yeah. right? But I, but I didn't, you know, I, it just revealed to me where I was at that moment and the work that I still need to do because I, we, my husband, you know, a poor thing, he was just, you know, so embarrassed and he felt so bad because he felt like he was the one who did it, but he did, he popped it back on my head and I made a beeline for the bathroom. Luckily, the back door was right next to the bathroom and I needed to be lying for the car. And mm -hmm. yeah, I tell you, there, there's some things, you know, when we surround ourselves with good people and, and women that are supportive, one woman, Melody, came running out to the car and she, and I'm, <laughs> you know, crying, hyperventilating. And she says, Cindy, it is just hair. It is right. just hair. And she kept telling me that. And she calmed me down, walked me off the cliff. And on the way home, my husband said, you know, Cindy, I, I know you don't want to hear this right now, but this could be your greatest moment because mm -hmm. it reveals who you truly are. And you're sitting yeah. here telling women to embrace themselves, embrace right. the, the trueness of them and being aware of that, your gifts and talents. And at the same time, you're running and ducking for cover. He goes, use this yeah. as your greatest moment. Then I, then I go to my daughter expecting sympathy. And she says exactly what my husband <laughs> My two dearest friends who I call my arm holders. I'm like, we're so proud of you. You're mm -hmm. so proud of you, you know. And and so the next day, I, I went to church and I embraced it. And I was talking to a woman's group that Tuesday. And I decided to tell the story four days mm -hmm. later. And it was really hard because yeah. it was fresh and there was still tears. <laughs> Right. But, you could feel the breeze, right? You're yeah, like, ooh. Yeah. And I said, if, if I'm not good with who I am without right. this on, mm -hmm. then I, who am I? Right. Who am I? I? I My gifts and my talents and things that I've been created to do outweigh any exterior thing that I have going on with me. So that that's how I handled it. And I decided from that point forward, I'm going to share this because I'm sure if I went through this and there's other women who are going through things too, just like you, yeah. just like you and, yeah. and the, use it for good and to help inspire others to have courage in those moments. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the things I love, I, I've done a lot of studying. I think before we started filming, you were talking about always learning and how you enjoy that. <laughs> and like you, I'm the same. And for 20 years in the empowerment industry, I've done a lot of different research on different things, going down different rabbit holes. And, you know, one of my favorite things as a connector who's taught around the world um, is meeting people. I love people. And I just spoke at an event last week 
and the person uh, who ran the event wasn't there. And she came, called me because she heard from her attendees, her uh, networking people, right. her attendees, you know, oh, she did this thing that was so special for each one of us, like personal la la la. <laughs> and she said, now I get it. Like when you mean you're intentional, I said, I love people. I love connecting with people, not about the the weather. Right. Yes, right. I live in California now, like you, Cindy, who, who's who been spoiled for many years about the weather. <laughs> but now I like to talk about the weather, but only for a half second. Like, oh my God, how are you? I'm great because the sun is out. Tell yeah. me what's next. You know, like, it's, let's get deeper. But um, I have found that it's fascinating as we continue to go down the electronics age, the digital age that's overrun with quick texts and a lot of emojis, let's face it, they're colorful and fun for a visual person like myself. But there's no intonation in a text. There is no, uh, we can't tell if the person is smiling or if they are, you know, like my husband making a unibrow because he's always looking at things so <laughs> closely, you know. Mm -hmm. um, now, when my daughter makes a unibrow, it's it, she's like trying to force a point like, you got it, mom. I'm telling you, this is the way it is. You're doing yeah. it wrong. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I find that opening ourselves up like you're speaking about and being transparent and sharing not only the the blessings and the wonderful things yeah. but sharing the things that really um shock us sometimes drop us to our knees open our eyes like your husband and your daughter mm -hmm. saying this could be one of your greatest moments like right yeah. here right now yeah. i mean i wish i caught it on a video and you're like oh god <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And exactly. Cut, you know, but they're like, no, seriously, mom. No, seriously. You know, wife's love of my life. But um, what I also have found is that we get to connect on a deeper level, like you were speaking about. And so many people have stories that are so important, but they silence themselves, kind of zip it, lock it, throw away the key, um, if they're my age, and remember that saying. But, um, you know, I love the fact that you chose, and you still choose, to share it on public forums like the Exquisitely Aligned Show, but also within the groups that you meet, because I think immediately you find new best friends in the women who are sitting, listening to you share you know, from your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with what you said. And I, I just love the, the point about connection mm -hmm. and that we, we hide really behind these devices that have really yeah. taken over our life. And there's such power in sitting in front of somebody just eye to eye and, and picking yeah. up on the tone of their voice and their, and their smiles and their, their sadness and all of that and being able to be real. Now, now there's a point where we don't want to overshare and we have to be careful not to right. share somebody else's story. And I'm right. going to navigate that, but, but the stories that we have in our life, what, what's happened in our past, how we remember it, how we bring it forward and present it today, we don't know what healing that mm -hmm. can bring to another person. You know, how yeah. to inspire them forward, how they might be stuck in a place right now, and we can use those struggles or triumphs to push someone to the next level. And I, I just love that about being able to connect one on one. Oh, absolutely. I was in uh, Marrakesh, Morocco, uh, on the content of Africa in 2017 with a group of women. And um, what I loved was in our hotel, uh, which was, I'm forgetting now the, the terminology because I'm thinking of the spa that I went to, but uh, <laughs> it was a, 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 a Riyadh's, a bunch of Riyadh's built together that mm -hmm. then they made into a hotel. So a few different family mansions that were connected through little hallways, et cetera, to become a hotel, a boutique hotel. And one of the traditions they had was every day at three o'clock, they served mint tea. 
hot tea. <laughs> and it was um, actually, I have my teapot right here. It was such a beautiful um, ceremony, and they oh. drink the tea. They mm. drink the tea out of uh, little tiny uh, glasses that look like um, tequila shot glasses. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they pour it, the oldest gentleman will go all the way up and then stop. And that's one cup. And then the next. And it's like this big ceremony. Uh, and they served a little itty bitty, super, super duper, a high octane sugary treat. Uh, like nothing I've ever had before. It was like, oh, now I know why it's tiny right. you know, because it was one of those. And you were like running around the, the hotel. <laughs> it was so lovely because it brought everyone together into the common areas to sip on a cup of tea. And it wasn't a big mug like my cup of tea that I'm drinking this morning, but this tiny little beautiful, uh, very ornate, delicate, and very refreshing mint tea on a hot day in Marrakesh. Mm. Um, but the conversations among strangers who then became connected on a deeper level, they right. were rich conversations. They were not about, you know, something so superficial. And I just you know, for me, I was like, oh, my gosh, we should do this everywhere. You know, I should come <laughs> home and at three o'clock, everybody come out of your, you know, my husband and I both work from home. Our daughter gets home from school about then. OK, everybody, tea time, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe I should do that. Set it up like a lemonade stand outside. We'll right. get my neighbors talking. Oh, that right. Gina, I don't know about her. Right. <laughs> but um, it's so true that there are five things that I, I like to write about when I talk about moving beyond emojis and they are feeling connected like you said mm -hmm. creativity right like having this conversation with you inspires me in in multiple ways you said uh you gave me a beautiful compliment uh again mm -hmm. i thank you for at the beginning of our last conversation mm -hmm. and also being able to let things out right instead of letting it fester that energy of like, let's, I'm going to use the word embarrassment. I would have probably been embarrassed um, mm -hmm. yes. had my wig fallen off. <laughs> um, I, I think I told you from Hashimoto's that I suffer with, mm -hmm. I lost my eyebrows, that and hormones mm -hmm. combinations. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. now I have like not ten, nine or 10 hairs. I haven't counted them <laughs> lately. But they are growing back, which is miraculous. Um, but as you can see, I, I use makeup to fill in yep. my eyebrows because I I would scare people, let's just say it that way, without an eyebrow because people are like, oh my God, what's going on? There's no frame for your eyes, you know? But, um, you know, if, if I were to walk around or not have my makeup, let's say, and have to come on camera, I would probably feel ashamed. And over time, we know from brilliant people who have left this earth, like Louise Hay, that mm -hmm. it does enter the body. So mm -hmm. if we can continually, like you're doing, discuss, help others share, mm -hmm. I mean, the healthy benefits you're bringing about, Cindy, are um, are commendable. You mm -hmm. know, I, I love that about you. And then the other thing is, I think you energize people when you share yes. from your heart, mm -hmm. that they go forth standing taller and, and feeling like that now they essentially, I say you give people permission to go forth and do the same. Now, not everybody is going to be as courageous as you <laughs> and be as bold and do it the next morning. But I think over time, what you say resonates with them and probably maybe within a week, they're able to start saying it to a good close friend and then who knows, maybe they'll be like you on stage with a mic sharing, you know, <laughs> one can only hope, right? Right. But yeah, um, yeah I, go ahead. I, well, I just feel that that our words, they, they do inspire courage in others. Yes. And I think that's one of the greatest compliments that we can receive in, in what we do is one of one of the people that we talk to, one of the women that we're working with, they go, oh, I was about to do this. But I heard you on my shoulder. And so I took the higher road. You know, I took the step. And that that just always um, 
that that inspires me to continue sharing. And then there was another yeah. thing that you said about creativity, and I just wanted to touch on this. What, one yeah, of the yeah. greatest things that we can do, I think, to reduce our feelings of shame, reduce the feelings of regrets that we may have or humiliation, and as I experienced, yeah. is have that heart of gratitude that, that may sound yeah. cheesy, but it's so yeah. true. It's so true. When after we had the, you know, our terrible, horrible, no good year, and I, I don't even. There, there was so much good that came from it. So I don't even right. like to say that. But my husband and I, we were in Colorado in September, October, and we're like, what can we do? Because there's so many people that circled around mm-hmm. us and helped us. Just yeah. random people. So we decided to have a gratitude party, yeah. and. I made up these little text message thing, you know, on Canva. Yeah. We just I, I sent it to my husband and I sent it to myself. And I said, the first person that comes to your mind all month of October, shoot him this. And so we had mm. our sales guy from Hank's Hardware and we had the mayor and we had, you know, just an eclectic group of people come to our house for this yeah. gratitude party and talk about deeper connection. When you were talking about your time with the tea. Yeah. Like all those people, they didn't know each other, but the tie that connected us all was that they acted as friends to us in some way without even knowing that they were pouring into us. They were. So to get all of us together, it was such a beautiful evening. So that creativity and that connectivity and and just energy of being able to share that. It was, it was really beautiful. Definitely something I'm going to do again. Next year. Oh, I would totally oh, tell you, do it again. I mean, those are the things that make, you know, for me, uh, life worth living, yes. right? Yeah. You know, it's not about the everyday hubbub of getting this done, checking off your to-do mm-hmm. list. For me, it's about those deeper connections. And um, like you, I love gratitude parties, but, mm-hmm. uh, and living a life in gratitude and always having that on the forefront of your mind and being able to see, I like giving, uh, I have all sorts of things on my desk and behind me as I'm thinking, but I use these um, one minute hourglass timers with my concierge clients to help them like see things differently within 60 seconds. You know, like how do I, turn what felt like a negative into what would be completely opposite. Right. And I like the, the idea that you have to flip this upside yeah. down, like, like doing down dog from my yoga <laughs> days. And you see the world differently. It's like a child being on uh, the monkey bars, which I don't know if that's politically correct anymore. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, the old fashioned. <laughs> so um but, you know, changing the way we see things and experience things and find those silver linings like your husband and your daughter were able to immediately, of, of course, I always think it's easier for the person on the outside to see them faster than you and I who are in the midst of the experience trying to process like, at what point did that happen? Where was my arm? <laughs> Where was everybody's eyes? Were they on the band, you know, were they on the food, you know, running through those um, what if I kind of deals. But um, yeah, no, I love the idea of a gratitude party. And I always think it's fun bringing people together who don't know each other. Um, That is one of the most fun things, I think out there in the world, because I always find that it's no longer six degrees of separation. Um, It's so much faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love going to parties to figure it out. Like, okay, who am I here to meet with? You know, why am I here? And, um, and uh, anyway, I won't share a story because I know we're coming to the end of our time. (laughs) But uh, we could talk for days, I think, Cindy. Um, <laughs> if only you had time in your schedule to talk with me for days. But uh, <laughs> we'll make it happen somehow. But uh, one of the things I want to last leave before I ask you another question is that 
connecting with somebody on on a level where you're being transparent and sharing mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. uh, more deeply than just the weather also brightens somebody's day and can change mm -hmm. their mood and one of the things I always love teaching, uh, not just to my children, but when I taught abroad at uh, high-end hotels as their visiting yoga instructor for the week, is the, the beauty of a smile. Oh, I mean, okay. it's just passing as I walk the dog, I smile and wave to every car that passes. Mm -hmm. My husband's like, do you know them? No, I can't even see through the windshield. The sun is reflecting. <laughs> like, you know, I and I am not very good with cars. I. I can kind of say, oh, they drive a white, like, sedan. <laughs> like, oh, that's going to help, you know? <laughs> like, So um, I don't help the police very often because to me it's like a, it's a big car. It's a small car. <laughs> yeah, right. It might have been a flatbed truck. I don't know, you know, kind of like that. It's somewhere between this and that. But um, really smiling at somebody, even a stranger, is more contagious than the flu and COVID. And it's something that can help us, especially because we're so oftentimes attached to these mobile devices with our texts and our emojis. Um, I so do on, on the smiling. I, I just wrote this in my blog last week. I, I, I got into an accident when I was little and broke all four of my front teeth. So that's a whole other story. So I was really guarded with my smile yeah but we don't know when we walk into a room right how we're going to make the people feel in that room and when we're guarded with our smiles if we're self-conscious about something yeah that come off as oh you know she's angry or right. uh, or you're repelling people but exactly. your smile is an instant attractant. It, it just dissolves any situation, you know, and it just allows this warmness. So it's always just good to be conscious of yes. how you enter a room and knowing how are you making the other person feel at mm -hmm. this moment. I, and I, I love that you brought that up about the smile. Yes. And <laughs> I, I lost my front tooth when I was two in an accident. So my mom would say, I'd like to put a chiclet there. Because, you know, <laughs> From two on till like six, I had no front tooth. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I understand that didn't keep me from smiling. I think yeah. I was so young. I, right. You know, you I said to my mom, a chiclet, why? <laughs> you know, like I had, I guess I had no real clue that I was different than everyone else who had their teeth. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I was so little, but I'd love to pull a card yeah. uh, for for you or have you pull a card i'll be your hands okay i did i did shuffle them through before okay. i'm okay. going to shuffle them one more time and then let's see if i can rifle through them so i'll try to have them facing you you tell me when to stop cindy okay. just like last time okay i'm gonna go no. okay stop <laughs> we won't prolong it too no, much how, how funny <laughs> listening oh <laughs> Mm. Isn't it funny how the right card always comes up? So listening, listening to the whispers of your body, mind, and spirit creates ease, simplicity, and peace. So the questions are, there's three, you can choose one, two, or all three. How do you listen to your body? How do you listen to your mind? How do you listen to your spirit? Mm, those, those are all, all three of those kind of interconnect. Yeah. And I love that that was, I was just listening to an Ed Milet podcast before we came on, on listening. So it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, that was the right card of for today. Of course. Of course. For, for me, just listening to your body, your mind, and your, your spirit, um, we have to, as, as women who are just involved and have our hands in so many different things. Yeah. We have to take the time, and I think we talked about this before, what I call reflect, reset, and we renew, and mm -hmm. that's listening to your body. Get out and move every yeah. single day. Uh, when you have, like, my thing that was going on with my scalp, I let it mm -hmm. go for, like, three months because I'm like, oh, I'm taking care of my husband. Oh, I'm too busy. <laughs> 
elbow, you know, and I did, wasn't scheduling doctor's appointments and I mm. could have gotten it in there so much sooner. So listening to your body from that standpoint, don't neglect your doctor's appointments, <laughs> right. but, but also just that your spirit and your mind, when, when you're overwhelmed and you feel like you're that rubber band ball, that that's so tight wound together yeah. That, yeah. that you can't even think it's time for you to schedule in an afternoon, schedule a weekend, something, get away and process your thoughts. You you have to, you, you'll, you'll never get past that mark of being stuck unless you take the time to reflect and reset and renew on a regular basis. It's, mm. it's key to my mental health. Oh yeah. I think it. that's one of the first things I do with women is get them to have that every day, multiple times a day. Uh, for me, it's my backyard. I try right now. It's a little cool and wet, uh, rainy season here, right? But uh, normally, I eat breakfast and lunch out there, yeah. and then sit out and meditate out there and pray. Mm -hmm. But uh, I take multiple breaks, and like you said, movement is so important. Mm -hmm. So we're not meant to be sitting behind a desk. Um, mm -hmm. We're meant to be moving around, and that's one of the things that I think can help children all the way through, you know, being 105 years old is some kind of movement. I love that. And it, it is, you're not alone in saying, oh, I was helping my husband and my, this, you know, like, right. and, my, and my neighbor's goldfish and my, right. <laughs> it is, it is so uh, common for women who are giving like yourself to be giving of yourself all day long in many different uh, facets to different people and mm -hmm. therefore putting your doctor's appointment on the, the next calendar, the next, the next. So um, before we started filming, Cindy, forgive me, I forgot to ask you, is there something you would like to offer? As you know, I always put your information in the show notes because I want people to be yeah. able to connect with you and continue this conversation personally with you. But I'd love to know if there's something you'd like to shout out today. Oh, well, I, I would let thank you for the opportunity to do that. But I, I do have a program called Lead My Life. It's live exceptionally and advance daily towards achieving your dreams. And if you would like to pop on by my, my Patreon page, that's our community page. And you can hop on there as a free member and just be inspired by the videos and, and different things that might uh, help give you some energy, some motivation to move forward into your best life. I would love to see you all there. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. And please, do uh, connect with with Cindy. You'll have even more fun. We only have a short period of time. So uh, as always, I greatly appreciate appreciate having you here with me. And again, sharing so transparently, um, so brilliantly and so courageously, the, you know, yourself, your stories and how you're able to inspire others to do what you do and live that amazing life because that's why I think we're here, right? Awesome. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. And thank you for coming back. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was such an honor to be here. Thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. And I'd love to offer for those of you, if you are at a point where you've been through a life stressor and you're ready to change and live your unspoken desire for more, I'd love to invite you to a call so we can see if I can help you define and design the destiny you desire and deserve with the exquisitely aligned concierge experience. Till next time, keep chatting, be transparent, and be exquisite.